little settings that you can do. This is based on iPhone, basically, because I have an iPhone, but the apps would be the same format in an Android, too, so the app stuff will be the same. Uh, so social media statistics, non-school related screen time among teenagers has doubled from pre-pandemic estimates of 3.8 hours per day up to 7.7 hours per day. And that's a ton. So the way that kids are spending their time has drastically changed from pre-pandemic to post-pandemic just in the last couple of years. So it's definitely jarring. Kids are spending a lot more time on their phones and there's a lot of dangers out there too. 46% of teens report being online almost constantly. Uh, their favorite social media apps as of fall 2021, 35% use Snapchat, 30% use TikTok, 22% Instagram. Um, I would say if we were gonna find an updated study for 2022, we might see Be Real on this statistic as well. Um, that's a new one that's popped up. Um, so what they don't want you to see are any of these a surprise, like an unfamiliar word to you? And feel free to like call it out if you don't know what it is. There's a Finsta, there's decoy apps, hidden DMs, school shipping accounts, vault apps, private DMs, requests, spam accounts, snap maps, screen recording, private stories. Are any of these unfamiliar to you? Yes. Yep. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> okay, sorry, I'm getting over a cold still. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a lot of um, lingo that I guess it's a lot more common in like the younger high school, middle school age students and um, we'll go over a little bit about what each of those are, but I'm going to first show you this quick video, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see. Hi. I'm Brandon White, Customer Success Specialist here at BART, a parental controls co Top 5 Internet Safety Tips Parents mm. Prize You. Mm -hmm. 1. There's danger. Protecting your child from strangers on the internet is one of the most important things a parent can do. If an app has a chat or messaging feature, there's always a chance that predators could use it to target your children. No app is safe either including fitness tracker apps, religious app chat rooms, or games for kids of all ages. That's why it's important to know which apps and games your kid loves. Watch them play, or better yet, join in so you can see exactly how it works. Not to ever give out personal information to someone they don't know in real life, no matter how nice they seem. can hide things your kids don't want you to know about. Vault apps. Hidden or vault apps are apps that look completely harmless, but are actually used to hide pictures, messages, or even other apps. To make it even more secure, some vault apps require a passcode. Though there are many different kinds of vault apps, and they're constantly changing, one of the most popular ones looks like an ordinary calculator. If you're concerned your kid may have a vault app like this, pay attention if they have more than one calculator app on their phone. They could be hiding things they don't want you to know, or anyone to know for that matter. One way to help prevent vault apps is to use a parental control tool like Family Link, Apple Screen Time, or Bark to manage what types of apps your child can download. Tip number three, private Instagram profiles aren't so private. You probably know that private Instagram accounts are a good idea for kids. But did you know that strangers can message your kids on Instagram even if their account is private? Talk about scary. Fortunately, you can make it so that strangers can't DM your child. Here's how to do it. On your kid's phone, open Instagram. Tap their profile photo in the lower right corner. Then on the next screen, tap the three lines at the top right. Did you know that a little icon is called a hamburger? The screen from the bottom will slide up. Tap settings, which is the gear icon, then tap privacy. Scroll down to messages and tap into that. This is where you need to be. The message control screen. Tap others on Instagram and then select don't receive requests. That's it. 
Now, if a stranger sends a message request to your child, they'll never even see it, which is definitely a good thing. Keep in mind though, that kids can always turn the setting off. Tip number four, Twitter isn't just for news. It's actually full of porn. This one may surprise you. Twitter probably isn't the first platform that comes to your mind when you think of porn. It's more known for breaking news and celebrity gossip. But Twitter's search function is basically a Google search bar. And typing in porn can lead to a dizzying array of profiles, tweets, and links with pornographic content. I was shocked too. Kids have figured this out and turned it into a go-to spot for porn for three main reasons. First, Twitter doesn't look suspicious if a parent does a quick browser history check. Second, because Twitter isn't exactly all the rage with Gen Z, it's not something parents tend to worry about too much when setting screen time rules or creating web filters. Finally, kids don't even have to sign up for a Twitter account or use the app to access its content. They can browse anonymously through a web browser. Like our advice with the Vault apps, we recommend blocking access to this app and website if it's something you're concerned about. Tip number five, kids use Google Docs for more than just schoolwork. When we were kids, we did homework in paper notebooks. Today, kids use Google Docs, which is a collaborative digital file. But there are also chat rooms, social media, and even diaries. When you glance in your kid's room and you see them typing on a white screen, it could be an assignment, or it could be a real-time combo with classmates about Fortnite or Harry Styles. There are also dangers when kids use Google Docs for reasons other than book reports, because kids can hang out in Google Docs and chat. Bullying can and does happen a lot. It's all too common for kids to harass and exclude others. Lastly, some kids may keep a private Google Doc and pour their hearts out into it, hiding feelings of depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation that they don't want to share publicly. We hope this video has helped you learn about some of the more pressing internet safety issues facing families today. It's a big world out there, and we're here to help. Visit bark.us for more resources. So, Bark is a good um, uh, parental controls app, and I think it works for both Android and iPhone. Parents try to keep kids safe and away from harmful online content, but it's more difficult than ever because kids have smartphones with them every minute of the day. No matter what parents seem to do, kids will always find a way to do what all the other kids are doing. Now our consumer technology reporter Jamie Tucker has a look at some tricks that kids use to do what they're not supposed to be doing. Apple and Google have some pretty good parental controls on their smartphones that allow parents to monitor what their kids are doing on their phones. However, kids know some secrets. These secrets they hope you don't find out about. They don't use traditional text messaging like we do. They use apps such as Snapchat, WhatsApp, WeChat, and any of the dozens of other messaging apps their friends use. These apps allow for encrypted messages that disappear after a few minutes or after they're read. So even if you look, you won't see anything. They may not even be messaging apps per se. Gaming apps, Discord, Twitch, and others give users the ability to send messages and images. Checking for these apps can be difficult. If someone wants to hide apps from their smartphone, it's easy to do now. On iPhones, parents can scroll past the home screens to see a listing of apps loaded on the phone or tap their account in the app store, then purchase to see everything that's been downloaded onto the phone. Kids can hide chats, messages, images, and videos inside hidden apps. These are often disguised as music later apps. They require a secret code to them. But they also have a secondary or dummy secret code. So if parents demand to see inside a locker, kids can give them the dummy code to open a locker with images they don't mind them seeing. Google Docs can also be used to send and share private messages and lock them up so no one else can find them. The best advice for parents of children, talk with them. Let them know what your expectations are and some of the dangers that are on these devices. And if you're a parent of a child 12 years old and younger, ask yourself, do they really need a smartphone, a computer in their hands all day? That's what the tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. There is an effort in schools to encourage parents to wait until their child's in the eighth grade before giving them a smartphone as a matter of safety. Any comments, thoughts, questions about any of that before we talk about parental controls and then I can get into the 
mirroring my phone. <laughs> Does anyone here have a parental control app that they use? What do you use? Family Link. We have Androids. So okay, cool. Family Link. Link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? There's one, if you have an iPhone, it's kind of built in too that you can kind of like limit certain things. The screen time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the screen time app. And you can monitor what kids are doing, how much time they're spending in one app or another. Um, but they can also like, they have, there's very, there's a lot of loopholes that they use to get away with like, just five more minutes, five more minute, minutes, five more minute. minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Just That's just it, right? one, and they yes. don't mind to yes. click that stupid little button it. over and over it. and it would drive yes. me nuts. I'm like, yes. I don't know how you do it, but they're determined. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also, well, they'll go, so they will hide behind the guise of like a, like a proxy server sort of thing. Like they'll open up, um, like Safari or Google Chrome and they'll get on there and they'll be on a website and you'll think that like it will it'll be through like Google Docs you'll think that they're doing homework but they're actually like somehow getting into like other things like shopping or like you know just messaging with their friends but it'll look like the time that is spent is on the screen well, on, um, Google Docs. on Google Docs yeah so it won't look very suspicious um, calculators um, so the, the calculator app, like they can make it look exactly like the calculator app, <laughs> like the, the image and everything. It won't even be a different color like the one that was an example in here. It'll be the same exact looking thing. And they'll type in a code and it'll take you to a, this is a vault app. It'll take you to a different folders, like a little server that they keep all of their little items in that they don't want you guys to see. Screenshots, nudie pics, who knows? Everything is kind of hidden in those usually. Um, and they will even have a decoy number. So if you figure out that there is a um, fake calculator app and there's like probably some suspicious things in there, they'll say, oh, mom, I just used that for like my ugly selfies. I don't want anyone to see, ha, ha, ha. And then they'll type in their decoy app code and then it'll be exactly what they said it is. And you'll think, oh, they're being honest and transparent and I can trust them, but they're actually kind of shady. It's fine. Wow. <laughs> Um, okay, so some of the seven best parental control apps of 2022, um, and this was from VeryWellFamily.com. Um, it might they might have an even more updated one because I did this a while ago. But um, something called Net Nanny, Canopy, Custido, Bark, um, Family Time, Our Pack, Norton Family. Um, so there's lots of different options, including, and then you can also consider you know the Apple one that's built in, um, Life 360, a lot of tracking stuff that you can use. Um, but it's really a great idea for anyone who has a child who has um, a smartphone to use a tracking app or like a, a parental controls app. Um, there's just so much dangerous stuff and like it looks innocent from the outside and then kids engage with it because that's what everybody else is doing and then they get into a problem that's too deep that they don't know how to solve and then they get like they're ashamed to bring it to you. It's a, it's all about having a relationship with your child that they can come and talk to you about things, even if they're like not sure if they're making the right move or if they've made a mistake and that they'll, you'll still be able to like help them through a difficult situation, um, even if they've been dishonest. Um, because that's really where having open conversations and helping them understand why we limit them and why there are dangers in the app and, and you know they'll think we're being dramatic but there's some real life examples that we can show them that there's dangerous things going on in the app so they need to figure out how to be savvy when they're exploring these social media apps um, and it's hard for them to do that when they're in middle school because they also need to be focusing on schoolwork and they only have so much frontal lobe development that they can see the consequences of their actions at this point in their lives. So they'll just engage with something and not think anything of it and like, especially for like some insecure kids, if somebody sends them a private DM and gives them some attention, it's a real slippery slope because they might get a lot of good, you know, feeling when they get that like compliment from that stranger and then we don't actually know who's behind the keyboard. It could be a kid, it could be some 40 year old out in like Ohio or something, who knows. Um, okay, so now I'm going to hopefully be able to show you guys the demo where I just kind of show you my phone actually. Um. While you're doing that, do you mind if I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. So I just showed my daughter, she is in sixth grade, the, um, the um, segment about catfishing 
the Virginia, I don't know if you guys saw it in the news, but um, it, I think I saw it on Friday or Thursday, but it was a 29-year-old former police. Yes. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, it's, it, so I, I showed that to her. And, and then he, he went came to California from here. and yes, killed everybody. And, yes, and drove to California and did And was a police crazy. officer. Former state trooper. I and her face Virginia. was like, well, you know, just, crazy. they just don't, yeah. You don't expect anyway, it. That's killed her recent parents. One. She got away, right? Yes, yes she, she got away. But still, but she didn't get away but because still, of the trauma of it. Right. Forever, forever. new one. Survivor guilt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so my screen is not going to look like any typical iPhone screen, but I think it's kind of like a good example of like how much kids can manipulate their phone screens to be able to make it <clears> seem <throat> one way whenever it might actually be something totally different. <clears throat> oh, I pressed the wrong button. Okay, this is my phone screen. <laughs> like that doesn't look like normal apps, right? So. What you can really do with iPhones at least is you can straight up delete certain apps from like being able to be clickable in your home screen and then you can create a like another like pretend app and I can upload whatever picture I want so it could be the same exact picture of a different app, rename it and link it to that app so I can, so Jeez. yeah, so this is Facebook but messages Instagram I mean I can click on any of these and it'll take me to the original app so I got lazy and I didn't do all of my apps this way <laughs> because it was a lot of work um, but there are lots of different ways that you can check and see what all apps there actually are on the phone this is a good way um, to be able to go to the app library you scroll all the way down the little cloud thing with the arrow going down means that it was on my phone and then I never opened it so they got deleted I guess um, but there is another exhaustive list that um, shows you any app that you've ever downloaded on the iPhone. If you go into um, settings, let's see. We already saw you have two copy Yeah. Oh, that's Wi-Fi. I'm trying to remember which one it is. It's in here somewhere where it's it might be in the app store <laughs> and then I think it's through the app store somehow. I'll have to look it up. So you said you can see everything even though they didn't keep it like <clears throat> even if they so sometimes kids will get away with having forbidden apps by downloading it using it when no one's looking and then deleting it because it won't show up on the library library if they download it temporarily then delete it again okay. with, with the Apple screen time at least the way I think it's set up she's got to ask permission to download any app right so yeah. that's another that's another yeah. good reason why we can have um, and then and then we have the screen time set up that she cannot delete any apps herself. We have to delete them. Oh. Exactly. The only problem is that I have found, maybe someone has figured out a way, is I have to turn off screen time and then delete okay. the app, but then I have to set up screen time like almost from scratch again. again. Oh. So that's, okay. like I, is, that, is that the way right. that works? Yep, yep, it yeah, is. It's not like I can turn it off temporarily or do like a override it myself. You turn it off, do what you, you need to do, up, but then you go gotta back. set it up all over again. Right. So, that, that, so it gets obnoxious, control. but yeah. you know. I love the, the control. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, this is just a game. Right. Right. Okay, yeah. So this is it. Okay. This is so I went in yeah. to be able to see any app that I've ever downloaded. I went in, I opened up the regular home screen app store. Um, and then I went to I guess I went to my little person up there in the corner. And then purchased. All purchases. I mean, I didn't spend money. It just says purchase whenever you decide to download it. Um, well, some of them I might have spent money. But I have a lot of like dumb games and stuff that I used to have, and then I download it, and then I delete it. 
but like this is like everything that I've ever downloaded in my actual life. Like, isn't that kind of crazy? Wait, mm -hmm. can you go back? Sorry, so I am. I must be in the I wrong think, place. I not think through the um, the app store app. So no, not, said yeah, it. just the no, 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 oh, not from settings. Not just go from the home screen. So like yeah, here. yeah, and then okay. click on your little person oh, button. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then purchased my purchases. Oh, you installed. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't want to look. <laughs> I know, I right? See their names. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so that's one way that you can look and see anything that's been downloaded on the app, other than there's anything that you don't recognize. Maybe have a conversation with your child about it and um, keep an eye on it. Uh, one other app that wasn't mentioned earlier. <coughs> uh oh, sorry, I lost my cat. Um, is I've heard some murmurs that Omegle is making a comeback, which are you guys aware what Omegle is? No. They do this often at like slumber parties or like when they're hanging out with their friends. It's it's like chat roulette, but now it's called Omegle or they're like two separate websites. But so it's very much exactly what that name is. It's chat roulette. Like they log on and they ask to get connected to somebody else who's also logged on and they will just like talk to random people. And there are a lot wow. of nasty things on there. There's like nudity, there are predators, there are kids being dumb, doing dumb things that people can record the screen and then post it wherever, sell it to whoever, um, can be vulnerable populations, people, kids that feel lonely and are looking for attention um, might go on there and seek out that attention because they'll get it because they're a child and they're a minor. Um, so yeah, so that is one big thing that I've heard some murmurs about it um, being more popular lately. How do you spell that? Omegle, O-M-E-G-L-E. -E. And then the other one is chat roulette. Yeah. So yeah, that's something that has been happening um, at least in my seventh grade group, I've heard. Um, okay, so yeah, so basically, you can make any app look like whatever app you want. Like, you can, I, I could have totally lied and said this is a calculator app and it's actually like, not, but it is. Okay, so starting from Instagram. So this is very much like me, my personal phone. So like, this is raw and unedited. Uh, like, this is what kids can have access to also. So if there's any like inappropriate memes, like that's also what they would have access to if they were on Instagram. Um, so just to have that perspective as well. Um, that's actually just one of my friends. Uh, so here's one you can make. So this little thing right here. So if you have um, family that is following you on Instagram, if your child posts a story on Instagram, they can post a story that everyone sees and then they can also use this filter that says close friends only that filters who can actually view a certain story. So if they wanted to post like a, a racy selfie because they were feeling cute that day, they could post it on the close friends only filter and nobody else that follows that person would be able to see it. So they could be hiding certain activities from people that way. Um, yeah. So that's that's one way that they are like, <coughs> whoop, a little bit shady. So if we go to the hamburger, so if we go up to that, oh, I have to go here first. Go to my profile and go to the hamburger. I can go if you want to see what your kid is like up to. They might know this, but they might not, so it's worth taking the chance. You go to your activity and see very much how they use the Instagram app, um, what time you've spent, that's embarrassing, photos and videos. I think that you have like, you, oh no, these are all of the ones that I have. Even, even some that I had posted and then later like archived so it doesn't show up on my main profile anymore. So if they have like other pictures that they're hiding from other people, then they might be, have previously been posted and then you can archive it. But if you go to the um, hamburger and go to your activity, the time, the second one down, then you can also see who they're interacting with. 
um, like commenting. These are all of the comments that I've made recently. I haven't commented since three weeks ago, but it's still there. I don't even know how long far it goes back or anything, <laughs> but there's also, you can see what I've liked. It's a bunch of cats and like mental health stuff. <laughs> so that's really interesting actually. And what else is, I find interesting is um, you can actually sort and filter. You can sort and filter like newest to oldest, author, start date, end date, so you can look at specific times like what they're looking at. Um, story replies. Anytime that I, so whenever you have a story posted, you can also like swipe up and like talk to the person that posted it and communicate with them. So this is also like how, whatever I have replied to somebody's random story, I guess. <laughs> um, reviews, I mean, if you buy things on Instagram and I, don't, I haven't marked anything that I don't like. Um, account history, you can see anything that I've done to change, like whenever I got married, I would change my username to change my last name. So you can see like the history of that too. Um, recent searches. You can also search that. Links, no link history, but if, you, if your child opens a um, Instagram profile and clicks on like a link because they're selling something and they click on the link in my bio, um, first of all, that's one way that they get into the Safari browser through an Instagram app and like pretend that they're on Instagram, but they're actually like searching up something naughty on the Safari app because it's open through that like window instead. Um, but links you visited, so if somebody is trying to like sell something to them, they click on the link in their bio, it'll show you here where what links they have clicked on, what access they've gained to something. Um, <coughs> recently deleted so I deleted this over the weekend because I went to Loudon Kitchen when I told somebody that I wasn't gonna hang out with them so that I realized later on that I should have deleted that so but that'll be on there for 29 days so until so if they post something they and they don't know that this is here is to like delete it again I guess so I can delete or restore so they could go in here and delete it again and that means that it would be gone forever I think but this um, will stay on here for 29 days so if they post a story and they don't want you to see it or they think that you're gonna like come and check their phone and they're like oops gotta quick do something they might go and delete it and then it'll be on here on recently deleted um, you can also download a copy of the information that you shared with Instagram and who knows what they know about me or you or anyone so it's all very concerning but also like intriguing because it just gives us a window into kind of what the kids deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so, but truthfully, Instagram is less popular now than it has been, um, but they kind of go between like Instagram and um, Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, God. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so Snapchat. Do you guys kind of understand, I guess, the makeup of Snapchat, how it works, or is there still like some confusion? Can you, yeah, I see them do it all the time. I don't do it, so okay. I don't. Complain. I don't. I I don't really like Snapchat because it's like boring to me now, I guess. But whenever it was like a big thing, you would just like snap each other back and forth, and you can see whenever you get a Snapchat, it's like filled in right here. You can have groups. Um, whenever they opened it, you can see when they've opened it. You can pin certain people that you talk to a lot to make it more easily accept accessible. Um, you also can post stories. Um, crap, how do I get to that? I'm just missing the button, I think. Nope, I guess not. Okay, so yeah, so this is my little avatar. Got my cat on my shirt. Um, this is my snap store. This is how much I have snapped in my lifetime, I guess. Um, there is I can add to my public story, the same thing with Instagram, I can add to my public story or I can create a group that only gets to see that and right now like I was just testing that out just so I had an example for here um, today. And this only has two other people in it to be able to have seen that. Um, and you would be able to see who's, who's seen it and the only two people that I shared it with 
don't check Snapchat. So. <laughs> um, but you'd be able to see it. You'd be able to see who's, how many people have viewed it and who has screenshotted it as well. Yeah. And also like 13 hours ago. And then uh, doesn't it like disappear? It, it disappears after 24 hours, yes. Okay. But it does not disappear actually. Like it's just hidden in a server somewhere. But Snapchat can always reclaim everything. And that's why they say all the time to not use this in any sort of like risky manner, especially for minor children. If you're gonna be posting something, just post it as if that's like gonna be on your Instagram or Facebook forever and ever because it basically could be. Because <laughs> if you ever became like very important suddenly, they can pull that Snapchat profile and embarrass the heck out of you. And everybody else you know probably. Um, yeah, so here's another thing. Yeah, other people can also take a screenshot of it, which is yes. why I keep trying and to Just because you think it went away, it, somebody else better. could take their phone and take a picture of it and send it right. to everybody that you know. And Within well, is that what that seconds. one statistic was, or is that something else? Sorry, say it again. <clears throat> you showed the one sample example, and there, you know, this has been snapped so many times, or someone took a screenshot of it. Oh, or, yeah, so it's right down here. So you can see how many people have seen it, right. and you can see how many people have screenshotted it. Is that within the app, or is that just this the is standard? This is within the app. Is that the standard screenshot? That's the standard screenshot right here. I mean, through Snapchat. That's the only icon. It's through yeah. Snapchat. But Snapchat's if they, if, the if only. Just, if you go your phone and you screenshot it, it's going to detect that you screenshot right. it. It is going to but if you that. use another device, yeah, they do. Some people yeah, will yeah, be yeah, with yeah, each yeah, other and yeah, take a picture of it on the outside. Yeah, There's right. also, okay. um, you would think that so. you could it's post a video and they can only get terrible. stills from the video, but it's, it's not actually little, true. Yeah. They can post videos and people can go out of the app, turn on, what is it? The record. Yeah, if I can find it. There it is. The screen recording, but I can't do that right now. And then they would just go back in and view the story. They get the whole video. They get the whole story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they can just yep. record everything. Yep. And okay. then if it's on the internet, you just have to look at it like it's going to be there forever, and you're really proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's one way. There is something that I haven't seen before. I looked at this earlier. Um, Snapchat Plus. Uh, you can pin one person as your number one BFF. Causes a lot of drama for me. Please don't. Um, <laughs> custom app icons so you can kind of make it look however you want. Hopefully they won't let you change. I mean, not that it really matters because they can change it anyway if they really don't want you to know that they have it. Um, you can spy on other people's like stuff so you can see how much somebody is snapping you versus other people, how much they like you or don't like you. Um, post view emoji, that's dumb. Story rewatch, you can see how many times somebody has rewatched your story. So that's something that can become like gratifying or addicting mm -hmm. or you know just something attention seeking and encouraging behaviors um, snapchat plus badge uh, bitmoji backgrounds da, 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 da. private priority story replies so if they want to reply to like a celebrity story they would be um, put higher on the ranking list so they have a better chance of being seen somehow as an incentive ghost trails this is what I found was really creepy um, so there is the snap map. So a lot of people have um, their oh, locations shared. Um, and now if you pay money, they will share where that one person has been over the last like 24 hours if they share their location with you or everyone. So they can literally see if you were at your homie's house mm -hmm. last night or something like, or like they can just track like where you've been and you can't like ever really feel safe. <laughs> You know, um, so that is terrifying, yeah. and it's only four dollars a month. Um, yeah. Oh yes, yeah. and it is Ugh. no joke. Like how so crazy. So if you're friends with somebody that you didn't know, and they turn that on, then that they can come can and find you. Find you. And not even right. just like in a general area. I'm telling you, they have exact location. Like exact yeah. location. Like this is me. I have the little ghost thing on because I don't share my location. That's my little hiding thing. This is very much where we are standing in the building. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? There's Rowan. She's up in House C, I guess. Or no, in House A. Um, but yeah, so that's very much where. In this case, it shows only your friends. In this case, it only shows the people that, have, that I have added who have their location set to public or to um, you know, certain friends and I was selected as one of them. I don't know why. Um, 
But yeah, so down here I can see my friend Sarah. She's at work at Light Ridge right now. She opened it probably an hour ago. Um, Matt is over there at Independence. <laughs> But it's kind of, it's just really creepy. So if you just creepy. hit don't allow like that, then that's... Uh, like yes, that. but they can always go in and change it back. But I, t I kid you not, kids will like go to school and stop at Starbucks and then I will have drama when kids walk in because like, I didn't know you were going to Starbucks and they yeah. like stalked them on their way to freaking school. And yeah. like, or they'll see that some, certain people are hanging out with their little bit emoji friends together. Like people are having a sleepover without them, yeah. drives them nuts. There's them. no, so there's no, like, I'm trying to think like, how do I, I can't start, they, they have total so access. So you can, like, how do, is there a way to lock it? it? Yeah, you can, oh, yeah. you can yeah. deny yeah. the app's existence the with parental controls. You have to be willing to do continuous research and making sure that they're not like finding loopholes basically. Also, um, some kids are motivated to do that. Some kids aren't as much, um, but it is possible. So it's always something to be just like aware of. Um, I, I think the what... biggest thing is building the trust between you yeah. two and understanding like why we don't do this and respect and things like that. I don't know if iPhone does it because like I said I've entered, but Family Link is available for anybody if like anybody can use it if you want to try. But I will say that it gives me a notification whenever she wants to download something, and then you can also go in later and see like a summary of everything in there, not just like what they did, but and it also does the screen control, like screen time. So you can say That's like awesome. I want to limit, and it's family time, the Family Link thing. The only thing I will say is when I first set it up, it was so secure that she couldn't even like get on the browser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you have to like really wait. You but gotta you can, figure it out. Like yeah. I don't have time yeah. necessarily yeah. every day, and I don't want her to know like when I'm gonna check. So yeah. I, so you can go in at any time, and, like, and you can do it from your phone. So right. like you no, have I'm, the app on your phone, and you can like. I'm do, can you do that with screen time? I haven't been able to look at the other phone I, for mine. I only do. I only have family because we have the. But for those who have phones. Apple, <laughs> who have iPhones. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I like it. I can see it from my phone. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I have to go. I have to go on her phone and actually look at it. That's what I see. Yeah. 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 Well, and I don't think that that's a an unnecessary boundary to cross at the middle school age. I think it's very appropriate for them to understand that like they are young. We are going to help them navigate this big scary world because it is big and scary. And the reason why we're helping them is not to do a I gotcha thing. Maybe even if you catch them doing something less than desirable, maybe just have a conversation and don't like punish them about it because they don't, they're going to be more apt to hide things from you if they yeah, feel okay. like they are going to get in trouble. Um, like if they are unaware of how things could play out and that's educational, that's one thing. So then you can say, okay, I'm teaching you how to navigate this social media world because unfortunately it's never going to go away. Like it's only gonna get more intense and more uh, become more a part of our everyday lives, um, and we've seen that over COVID and everything too. So, yeah, it's been a lot different, but um, there there never it's never gonna go away. So, working with it instead of against it is gonna be the best course of action I would recommend. Um, becoming familiar with it, follow them on social media too. Like you know, just kind of stay connected with them and. Um, Maybe even require to have their logins. They can always like change things, you know, but some, I mean, if you build up a trust with your child, they will want to be trusted. It's a good feeling to be trusted by their parents. So it's something that's rewarding in that way. Um, you can see if you go in to, oh, I just want to smoosh my face in this belly, which is probably a cat. Um, but you can see that you can actually like, save conversations um but if i were to send a new one and i didn't like hit like hold my thumb on this it would delete after 24 hours um i do think that there's a way to get that back though if you download the, the data from snapchat um which you could do from settings it takes a while for it to generate but um let me also show you <laughs> so snapchat now has like a TikTok thing too, because they're all trying to be TikTok now. Um, when it comes to friends, this is pretty creepy. Um, anyone can add literally anyone. Like, I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know how they got, look, it says by search. Some of it doesn't say anything. I, I, I'm like, why are you searching me? I don't know who you are. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Like, actually, there's so many of them. Actually, Snapchat has, has been recently just like 
rural area, and you said just sending me uh, people this, added you, or this is in Snapchat, or right. whatever, and I just ignore, but I suppose there are people who just accept. There are kids that are like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't know who this is. This stranger that wants to add me, we be friends. Mm -hmm. And um, there's some other things that I find odd is like, some of these people I have like in my contacts that I don't have as like friends, but then there's some of them that I just don't recognize at all and it just says like 20 plus mutual friends. Like they just think that I'll know this person because I have a lot of mutual friends with them. So maybe I'm trying to like avoid somebody and I then they add me or something. It's just like they can delete it and then like add another one to it or block them and you can add you can add them back again and it becomes this like never ending cycle. They can't really get away from it. Um, so anyone can really add you. And if a, co if a kid sees that and like maybe doesn't know who that person is and wants to find out because it could be one of their friends, or it could be a predator, who knows? Um, another thing that, I don't know if it'll work out this way this time, but um, last time I did this, I showed on the Snap Map um, <coughs> that how quickly you can have access to like vaping. Um, because you can also where it set where it's like the little glowy pieces right here You just click on it, and it's like a public story that anyone in the GPS area can share to anyone can, So like anyone can like watch it. It was like posted on a public story So you have personal stories that you can only link to your account But this person made it a public story for anyone in this vicinity area to be able to see um, So this is like people's random kids on here. Um, there's often some inappropriate things. There was last time there was a vape shop that was advertising a sale um, right on the, yeah. the little public filter thing and it was like right next to Spanky's or something, I don't know. Searching for jobs, I don't know. There was, um, you could just click on anything basically and it's just exposure to literally anything. There's no guarantee of what they would be able to access with that. Um, you can also go somewhere like Vegas and see what Vegas people are up to. Like something like inappropriate, I'm sure. That's scary. That's why my kid doesn't have it because I'm like Google. So they can yeah. just search up like anywhere in the world and see like what's going on. What's going on, and so Vegas a, would be a bad a idea. Question: Is there a, um, a presentation like this that they do at the school so that yeah, you know, like coming from you versus coming from me? I'm <laughs> thinking, my ha! my. 16 year old will listen Maybe. because he's like that, but my 11 year old. I mean, I haven't given any of this to a child. It's basically just been geared towards parents. This is only like the second or third time that yeah. I've done this. Um, but yeah, so I would be more than happy to talk to kids about it too. That would be fun actually. And then they try to teach them the tricks. Well, yeah, I'm sure oh. that, that, well, that's what I'm saying. I would have to pick and choose. Yes, yes. What I would be, yeah. if I were to tailor this to the children, I would have to tailor it to like the dangers. Yeah, right. Not the yeah. how we can permit it. Not, not how yeah, how yeah. And like why it's important right. exactly. to like, you meter you things. It yeah, yeah. There. Right. Exactly. there was a guy from FBI cyber crimes that used to do talks, and he that like he at my old job, that's what they he would come out to the school and talk about like you don't want to have them like living in fear every day, right? right. But like yeah. balanced of like yeah. how quickly things can turn, like when yeah. people. I'm possibly gonna miss my class. Um, but I, that would be a speaker so, that would be good for them to hear is like the dangers yeah. of social media. Yeah. Just, just like, and I know that there are like, I, not your, not that you're not, this is super helpful, but like if there are like other people you can pay to come into the school. Oh yeah. yeah. I looked into that one time. It, it, because so they, they, they kind of do need to, to be that. a little bit fearful of it. Are, I think as much as dare or, or anything else like about drugs, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. This, this is, is like this the new drug. I know. Just, exactly. It's yeah. Exactly. And hurt and so the national missing, what's it called? NCMEC National. Mm -hmm. Missing and exploited children. Yes, they yeah. did one a long time ago. 
that I I've mean, about. Yeah. It's but bad. Yeah, like, I've learned about like gone to presentations about human trafficking and how that. This is how they do it. Like, people next door. Yeah. It's not. They get your not, location. Like, see, like you know. They see what you look like because you post and a public story. And kids who agree to do like you know they they start relationships and then they they, yeah, they start having trust. conversations and they build trust and it could be a kid who's being trafficked and coming home every day. It, it doesn't have to be that they're like abducted and gone. Right. right. Like they even yeah. have like where what things look like. That's how like down to the nitty gritty you can get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's better than Google Maps. I think. Literally, yeah. it's it's yeah. just yeah. and find my phone. Like, yeah, it only gives you a general area, not a right. You can like oh, right. like quite literally. You can like, see like where building. we're at in the freaking building. I guess that's yeah. like Life that's 360. Yeah, like, yeah. Life 360. It is. It's yeah. wild. Very and and kids, I so I was looking for this earlier, but I noticed when I was like, you know, preparing all of this for today, I looked and I saw one of our students on a public story, and it was like one of my seventh graders. He was just doing something dumb with a filter and just put it on public story, and I'm like. Okay, but that gives people access to yeah. you too. Did you go to him and say yeah, do you, why so you when, do that? Um, I haven't yet, but uh, I just got here. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have my permission. <laughs> 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 you tell them. But I guess you have that authority. I guess that's the right. Case. You have the authority to like to, to say. Well, it's also kind of creepy, like, right? So I want to creep them out a little right. bit and be like, listen, yeah. I'm sure you didn't I want me to see you doing this dumb thing with this Snapchat, but I did. Yeah. So everybody else can too. Like will, yeah. And then yeah. your peers that you um, are trying really hard to like stay in with are gonna see that and then like also make fun of you yeah. or like screen record it or screenshot it because it had this like tear emoji. He's like it pretended like he was crying. This little like uh. filter that makes you look like you're crying or whatever. It was really funny, but like don't put that on social yeah. media. So and then on the other side of that is that I can also swipe up and figure out what their. Um, their profile yes what their creator is what that what that is you can subscribe to them you can um, send you can share their profile you can add them that's how people make friends yeah. on snapchat uh, but yeah so that's snapchat I'll just go into TikTok really quick um, I yeah so 100% you need to make sure that their child, your child's um, account is private. Um, I'm sure that they can still change it. Um, there's also this feature where, so I can see that 49 people have viewed my profile. Um, other people can see that I've viewed their profile in the last 30 days. Um, these are different settings that you can have. Um, if I turned it on, I, I would be able to see who's viewed my profile and I would be able to see, uh, or they would be able to see that if I viewed their profile. But since I have it on private and everything, they, I, I hope, can't. But obviously, I don't know. Um, let's see. There's also, you know, you can create things that are in the locked right here, where you don't actually post it. Um, you can do, you can search, you can look at their profile and see. Um, yeah, that's something that I apparently have saved because I thought it was funny. Uh, yeah, so if I, if anyone has saved, if your child has saved anything that they wanted to come back to later or they wanted to show someone later, then it would be in this little saved thing and it has the eye thing with a cross through it because it's not able to, it will be seen by anybody else unless you're in their profile. You can also see what you have liked recently. So, cats, people complaining, apparently that's what I like. Um, there's also stories that you can add, just like every other app. Follow requests of people I don't know. Um, new followers. You can message with people, you can message with creators. Um, if so there's a feature where if you're like a content creator that's like a verified creator that's usually posting a lot of um, TikToks and whatnot they you can like swipe up uh, to talk to them and, or like comment on their story um, or you can also DM them um, and you can get through they will allow you to DM them one time and that means that if they just DM you back this like famous person they, that you can have a conversation with them um, 
but if they don't DM you back, then you can't continue to access them, which I think mm. that's probably good. Um, but yeah, some people use that to try and like attack like celebrities and they get on their like high horse and you know stuff like that. Um, there's so this now thing is sort of like the be real stuff. Um, but I'll show you be real here in a minute also. There was one other thing I wanted to show on this. Settings and privacy. So this is where you would be able to change the privacy settings. You can see blocked accounts, no blocked accounts. This is how I would be able to manipulate profile views, post views, stuff like that mentions and tags if I didn't want that to be a thing. Um, this was also something interesting is you can have more than one account and you can just like switch from account to account. You can also then delete the account from the TikTok app and then pretend like you only have this one very innocent account and then you have this totally other account that you just like remember the login stuff to and you re-log in and then you delete it again and they just get away with having this fake account, this bin stuff. Um, <laughs> That's what it's called. Yeah, Insta, yeah. Fake Instagram. Um, but yeah, that you can also do that on the Instagram app um, show. So you can't see it because I have too many notifications, but there's actually like a drop down right here. And you can see I have a couple of other little accounts that I can just switch in between, but that's not something that a lot of people probably know about, like, te like teachers, like parents and honestly teachers too probably. Um, but there is like a little drop down right there that you can change over to. Um, so Be Real is a new one, just to go over that really quick. Um, so this is an app where, honestly, I think only Gen Z kids use, because none of the kids that are the, the kids, um, none of my friends use it. This is something that you, Post like a be, it's, a, it's called a be real. Post a like be real. Okay, so if I was gonna do this, I would do it like, because they take a front picture and a back picture at the same oh, time. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so then they try to play me and we're like, Miss Hendrick, take our be real for us. Oh. And I'm over here like, <laughs> and I didn't know that they were gonna take a picture of me too. Oh so yeah, um, so don't let them play you because it takes a front picture and a back picture and they get a really nasty look at angle by accident. Um, so then you can change the setting to my friends only or global. Jeez. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Um, so then whenever you post, you can't see anything until you post. So I'm a stalker oh. and sometimes I will stalk the children that added me because no one else uses this app and I'm just curious about it. So I added them so I could see how it worked. And it's honestly just dumb stuff, but like still, like I don't know if they are. But you don't. Oh, so you don't see until it's posted. So you, you can't see what anyone else is up to until you, you, you post. And sometimes they'll play around and not post anything. Like they'll just like put their oh, thumb over it so you can't see it. Um, but there's also the ability to interact with people um, and see what they're up to. Yeah, there's a chat. Uh huh. There's a chat feature. So it's like Snapchat ish. Yeah, and it's kind of like just like a it social media a thing. Too on there. Right. It says like where you were. Discovery. This is like random people that posted to their global story that I can see now that I've posted to any story too. And then I can also interact with them. And then that can also like start a chat too. There's also a history that you can go in and see where I've posted. Um, requests, friend requests, sent requests, friends that I have, yeah, so, and this is all people that don't have it, I'm sure. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to show you on Instagram, I keep forgetting. The private DM requests, it's kind of hard to find, but kids usually know where this is unfortunately so 
This is like my actual DM thread that I never check apparently. Um, but then you go to requests, because these people are my friends, that they show up in here because I have them as friends and they can show up there. But over here, if you go over there, I have other people like DMing me. And then there's also hidden requests, which I think that filters out like things with um, sensitive content or like talking about like pornography or something gross basically. Um, but every once in a while, I'll have like a random person message me about like beauty pics or something. And then there's people that are trying to get me to talk to them about being a brand ambassador. And they'll do this with kids too. And kids will get like all excited about it and they'll get information from them this way because they feel excited. Oh my gosh, they think I'm so pretty. They want me to sell their product for them. They're gonna send me a product to get me an address. Yeah, it's real easy. Yeah. So that's just one way that so I'm trying to think if there's anything 